Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather, Monday's edition of Alaska Weather on this 18th day of November 2019. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. And up first, uh, quite an illumination to the hazardous weather graphic here. Uh, we've got, well, start with winter storm warnings, or actually high wind warning here for St. Lawrence Island and the Bering Strait Coast. For tonight and uh, Wednesday and uh, gusty north winds uh, gusting over 60 miles an hour uh, possible or probably will develop uh, tonight and continue through tomorrow and then we've got winter storm warnings out here from the uh, Cuscom Delta on up into the uh, Galena area there into the mid uh, low, uh, Yukon River Valley area mid and lower valleys there and that's uh, also includes the Cuscom Delta and that's for mixed precipitation and snow and gusty winds as high as anywhere from 40 to 60 miles an hour and snowfall amounts anywhere from four to eight inches or more possible especially on the upslope areas of any uh, higher terrain and that's uh, kicks into effect uh, about midnight tonight and continues uh, until uh, let's see I believe it, it ends tomorrow morning I believe for the uh, Cusquam Delta and then continues into tomorrow evening here farther to the north into the Galena area. And we've got winter weather advisories out here for the central and eastern interior for uh, oh, this, uh, Koyukuk Valley eastward into the Fairbanks area as well as the upper Tanana Valley and then back to the south here that's for mixed precipitation with the uh, big push of warm air overrunning the colder air There'll be anywhere from two to four inches of snow falling in some areas with uh, glaze on top of that as it transitions over to rain. And that's uh, due to kick in tomorrow and continue through tomorrow night here for the eastern interior. High wind warning out for the uh, eastern Alaska range with uh, gusty winds uh, increasing up to, uh, above, well gusts will be above 60 miles an hour, it could be in that 50 to 70 mile per hour range. And that uh, is in effect for late tonight and through Tuesday into Tuesday night there for the Eastern Alaska Range. And finally, there's a winter storm watch out for the uh, Susitna Valley. And that uh, is out for, let's see, check my notes here. That's out for uh, late tonight, about midnight tonight through tomorrow. And that's... Uh, for uh, possible heavy amounts of snow, actually, uh, for, for the day Tuesday here for the Susitna Valley, especially uh, heaviest up where it usually is on the north end there and then over toward the Alaska Range could be as much as eight plus inches falling, possibly. Otherwise, away from there, it'll be more of a uh, four to six inch type of thing. And let's uh, move on to satellite imagery here and uh, pretty good little pressure area south of uh, ADAC there and that pushing the front, uh, got a triple point type front here pushing up to or trying to make its way into the southern Bering Sea. Uh, not a lot of precipitation associated with this, just about, uh, oh let's say about a tenth of an inch falling at uh, St. George Island and then only eight hundredths of an inch falling on Alaska, so really not a big precipitation producer, at least at any of the uh, sparse locations we have out out here in the area there but uh, winds uh, St. Paul or St. George seeing winds gusting or both St. Paul and St. George winds gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour anywhere from 30 to 40 miles an hour here for the eastern Lucians and Alaska Peninsula area otherwise uh, to the north we've got uh, kind of this uh, weakening trough here spread some rain into Kodiak, southern Kodiak today. Uh, Akiak picked up about two tenths of an inch and then some isolated showers through here. Moisture is pushing up into the western Alaska range, really hasn't made landfall yet. Uh, some upper level, or upper level trough that uh, brought uh, the snow 
light snow across uh, southern Alaska and the eastern interior today. That uh, also produced about uh, three-tenths of an inch of precipitation at Valdez. Otherwise, everywhere else had lighter amounts and snowfall amounts anywhere from one to maybe two inches, and that was about it. And the southeast coast, another showery day today, but precipitation is light, and those showers tending to taper off. As you can see, that system well into Canada now, but some lingering showers this afternoon, but those will uh, eventually come to an end. And then uh, where this moisture goes, uh, well, on the chart today, you can see the one trough moving through the southeast coast. Areas of light snow, cloudy skies here, eastern interior improving from west to east as that moves on out. And then kind of a weak trough right through here that's uh, kicking off some showers. Uh, nothing significant, though. Another weakening trough here that brought precipitation to Kodiak and into the uh, Aleutian Range, Alaska Peninsula. And a few showers out toward the uh, Pribilofs with those gusty winds and the tightening gradient, mostly due to this next frontal boundary that's uh, coming northward here. And again, this spread some light rain into the eastern Aleutians and gale force winds there for the Pribilofs coming back and then gale force northwesterlies wrapping back in around kind of a complex low center here. And what I mean is there's uh, possibly three centers, could be one here developing this one, the main low, and then one farther to the south in the trough there. Otherwise, to the north, uh, seasonably cool and mostly dry with light winds. Maybe a few flurries on the far western Arctic coast, kind of a, due to this trough that's in the uh, Chukchi Sea there between two upper or two high ridges. And for tonight, a little bit better chance of maybe some light snow or flurries with that, getting into the central coast, maybe a little farther to the east, and then back on down toward Cape Lisbon. Uh, but nothing significant, mostly clear. Big story, increasing winds here, the high wind warning kicking in for St. Lawrence Island. And also look for the winds to increase even before the precipitation arrives here over the Yukon Delta. And uh, good push of warm air coming up here, but that's going to be down along this uh, frontal boundary here. So whatever begins to fall will take on a mixed type. We'll start as snow, changing over freezing rain sleet, that type of thing, and then uh, mixing out and then becoming mostly rain, Kodiak, Bristol Bay later tonight, or actually more like tomorrow, and uh, moderate amounts of rain along the Alaska Peninsula. Winds on the increase here, uh, North Gulf Coast with increasing, definitely moisture pushing up into the North Gulf Coast and inland into the Southern Copper River Basin and uh, westward there to the, uh, mainly the Susitna Valley. Showers are ended over the Panhandle Outlook for tomorrow, that gets replaced. Rain spreads over even all the way down almost to Dixon entrance by late afternoon tomorrow. And uh, moderate to heavy rain developing with uh, gusty winds here, especially the uh, mountains or through the uh, passes of Chugach Mountains as well as even the Western Alaska Range. Southerly winds are trying to bust into the Copper River Basin along the Copper River there. And an area of mixed precipitation and snow and or snow here pushes up into the uh, eastern interior about as far as Eagle and then back to the southwest and uh, really good gusty winds here. Look for anywhere from 40 to in some cases could see gusts as high as 70 miles an hour with this uh, gradient here but that's going to be higher elevations pretty isolated at that speed. Otherwise mostly dry still the flurries on the western Arctic coast and high pressure over the western Aleutians ahead of the next front which on Wednesday takes a pretty good jog to the east but weakens and stretches out quite rapidly. Low pressure now comes on shore here in the southwest coast. Snow to the north, rain and rain showers to the south, mixture in between, and snow showers eastern interior. That front uh, trying to push into the panhandle keeps a significant amount of rain coming up here for the eastern north Gulf Coast. Yakutat, but they're used to that. And then heaviest rain over the northern panhandle with gale force winds, better conditions down to the south. And for the uh, lows tonight, anywhere from Again, uh, 22 or 15 to 30 below northeast interior. Bettles forecast low tonight, 24 below. And uh, a little below zero through the Tamanaw Valley and westward also to Galena with uh, temperatures mid to upper 20s here south of the Alaska Range, mid teens there for the Copper River Basin, 30s to lower 40s for the Panhandle, lower to mid 40s for the Alaska Peninsula under mild southerly flow. Your highs tomorrow will be anywhere from upper 40s to maybe mid 50s here for the uh, uh, Alaska Peninsula right up to about 50 for King Salmon, near 50 for Kodiak. 30s warming toward 40 here as the warm air pushes into southern Alaska, stays cold up to the north and highs in the 40s for the Panhandle, mid 40s for Adak and Atka. 
lows on Wednesday morning. Uh, still below zero up here to the north, but that zero degree isotherm getting pushed back to the north and not falling quite as low. Very mild here, upper 30s to mid 40s for the panhandle, upper 30s to lower 40s, south central Alaska again, lower 40s for Kodiak, and then your afternoon highs Wednesday afternoon, not much warmer than the lows, lower 40s here, south central Alaska, mid 40s for Kodiak, and in the 40s for the panhandle. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on into flying weather, you can see a big swath of IFR here from the central southern Bering Sea eastward, crossed uh, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak, and also cutting across the extreme southern Kuskokwim Valley, Kamishak Bay, southern Kenai Peninsula, on up into Prince William Sound with VFR here in the uh, central interior, and then some marginal VFR, western North Slope and Arctic Coast. For the afternoon, marginal VFR overspreads uh, the entire panhandle by tomorrow afternoon. IFR comes a little farther to the east here, uh, definitely into the Yakutat, not quite to Elfin Cove, and then into the uh, southern Copper River Basin, Prince William Sound, northern Cook Inlet, uh, Susitna Valley on up with uh, possible IFR southern slope central Alaska range, and then pretty good area here over the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta and the lower River Valley areas on across Nunavak Island, St. George, on down to the eastern Aleutians. Wednesday morning, uh, still a lot of IFR here, Gulf of Alaska, up into the uh, Copper River Basin, Prince William Sound, and uh, much of South Central Alaska, got some marginal VFR here. That's due to some downsloping wind conditions there on the lee side of the uh, Chugach Mountains. And also another band of IFR just uh, making landfall on the southwest coast of Kodiak, and yet another one here farther to the west with a narrow swath up there from uh, Norton Bay on up into the, uh, well, almost into, well, over the Koyukuk Valley, breaking out the VFR back to the west and northwest, and next front, next system spreading more IFR into the southwest, bearing eastward across Atka and bearing down on Nikolsky probably Wednesday evening. And then for Wednesday, or I'm sorry, Wednesday afternoon, uh, that does come into uh, Nikolsky here during the uh, late afternoon hours and then kind of hangs back uh, north of the Aleutians. So look for some improvement out there for uh, Adak Atka all the way out to Shimia. Not too bad here over the northern Bering Sea, Pribloss, IFR hanging in over the uh, Kuskokwim Bay area and into the uh, Togiak area, northern Bristol Bay, actually up into the uh, Kuskokwim Valley, eastward, south central Alaska, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Manuska and uh, Susitna Valley, maybe the Manuska Valley, and another area IFR here over toward the eastern border, and also up there from uh, Selawick, northeastward to the eastern Arctic coast. Narrow band now kind of pushing in, trying to push into the northern panhandle, otherwise marginal there. Anatubic and Anagan, another VFR day coming up for both passes there tomorrow with uh, virtually clear skies. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, uh, Marshall VFR becoming IFR probably quite rapidly during the morning hours and same trend for rainy, maybe uh, a little bit slower but not much. Marshall VFR becoming IFR, especially on the eastern approaches of all three passes. Uh, that'll be the lowest conditions on those eastern entrances. And then windy starting out VFR becoming marginal VFR, especially on the southern entrance where there's a possibility you could see IFR there late in the day. And for Isabel, IFR, Mintasta, call it marginal at this point. Tanita also looks uh, pretty marginal. And uh, Portage, IFR, Chilkoot and White, marginal becoming IFR. Freezing levels, south to north flow here. Uh, good push of warm air trying to push, uh, come northward here with uh, two to 6,000 feet from the southern Kuskokwim Valley down to uh, Kodiak Island. It's almost 8,000 feet around Sitkanak, 2,000 feet for the Panhandle. Icing. A uh, good slug of moisture coming northward here with that storm in the south to north flow. Uh, widespread icing here, possibly, or the uh, reddish shaded areas or rust colored areas, uh, considerable moderate rime icing, especially here along the North Gulf Coast. And taking a look at the jet stream, there's that uh, southerly jet that I just spoke of with a pretty deep trough, low center, actually coming northward here in, and then stalling out and northwest flow comes pretty far to the south and then south to north up over this uh, sharpening ridge over the uh, Gulf of Alaska, slow, slowly moving eastward. 9,000 feet strong winds, uh, 
50, 55 knots, uh, and then about uh, 60 knots here into the southwest interior, 45 Kenai Peninsula, and lighter over the uh, Aleutians, 3,000 feet uh, southerly, up to uh, 55 knots here into the southwest interior. Otherwise, on the increase, uh, 25 to 35 knots, uh, south central Alaska up to the central Alaska range, lighter to the north, southwest 15 to 25 into the panhandle. Northeast release 30 to 35 for St. Lawrence Island. Turbulence wise, a lot of moderate shot, pretty likely. Could even be severe for small aircraft in some areas. Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, right up through the western and central interior. Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And joining us once again is our good friend Eric Stevens from GINA, the uh, uh, Geographic Information Network of Alaska. Thanks again for joining us, Eric. We really appreciate it, as always. Happy to be here, Dave. Thanks. And, you know, we're, we're going to ask you some more satellite questions here, but, you know, okay. since you're a regular guest, we, we're going to give you a riddle this time, kind of a, a trick start to the show. Okay. How do you see a polar bear in a snowstorm? Sounds like a challenging question because okay. the polar bear is white and the snowstorm is white. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, in the world of satellite meteorology, uh, you couldn't because um, the spatial resolution of this instrument that we're going to talk about today has 375 meters resolution. And okay. even the most well-fed polar bear will not be 375 meters across. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to run into such a no, creature, a would you? Um, in the satellite meteorology world, the equivalent would be, how do you tell the difference between clouds and then an area that has no clouds but is mm -hmm. covered by snow, right. a piece of ocean that has no clouds but has sea ice. Ah. All three of these are white. The, right. the snow, the clouds, the sea ice, it's all white. So how, using satellite data, can you tell someone where the clouds are and where the clear areas are? This is important for aviators. Right. Uh, mariners want to know uh, in the ocean there, this white stuff, is that sea ice or is that just a cloud? Right. How do we tell the difference? And it turns out, if you look, say, at a picture of Alaska from the springtime, March okay. or April, and it's high noon, so we're getting a lot of sunshine. If you were, ride, if you were riding on a satellite with your human eye, yeah. look down, everything's white. Right. And we've got uh, you know, a picture for, of Alaska from uh, early April, and mm -hmm. we're seeing some of the lower elevations in south central Alaska are melting out, getting some brown ground there. But otherwise, there's a whole lot of white sure. on the image. What areas are cloudy, but what areas are clear and covered by snow or ice? Okay. It turns out that if we leave the visible spectrum behind a little bit, okay. see a satellite has multiple channels in the electric magnetic spectrum that it can look at. Oh, okay. Part of that's okay. visible light, what right. we see as humans, but there's a lot going on at other wavelengths. Mm -hmm. If we add in something that's called near infrared, what we couldn't quite see, but we're getting into that infrared territory, mm -hmm. there's a magical property that oh, we can exploit. Secrets to find. Okay. Oh yeah. This is actually powerful and, and, and almost magical that at a, a slightly longer wavelength when the sun shines down on Alaska mm -hmm. and then it bounces off back to the satellite at that near infrared wavelength it turns out that snow and ice will absorb that wavelength but uh, liquid water like liquid droplets in a cloud mm -hmm. will reflect it back. Okay. And, and that's not the way it works in visible. You know, visible, it just bounces off of all those targets the same. But at near infrared, snow and ice absorbs it, and the liquid will reflect it back. Liquid cloud droplets will do that. Okay. And so an image where everything looks white suddenly becomes colorful. Oh, okay. And the way this recipe works is that the clouds look pink, and the snow-covered ground and the ice-covered ocean look blue. Suddenly now, we're able to see the polar bear in the snowstorm. We're able to see where the clouds are okay. and where the snow is and where the ice is. This is a powerful advantage. Consider the case uh, zooming into the Bering Strait area. Mm -hmm. What if you were asked to brief a pilot who wanted to fly, say, from Kotzebue down to Savunga or Gamble right. and had to fly VFR, visual flight rules, right. so they had to stay out of the clouds? Could you use a satellite image where everything is white to provide that pilot any guidance? It'd be pretty tricky. Very tricky, yeah. and that's why we have to go to this other recipe where the, the all-white polar bear in the snowstorm becomes more colorful. And now we can tell the pilot, aha, this is a cloud you want to stay out of, but over here, sure, it looks white in the visible spectrum, right. but what we're doing, we'll show you, oh, this is just snow-covered ground, but it's clear, so you can fly right through there, visual flight rules. Same thing for a mariner, a mariner who might want to uh, get down to uh, St. Lawrence Island, say, but mm -hmm. it has to avoid the sea ice, 
this product has applicability there as well. Wonderful. It's, it's an amazing new technology, so many new channels. Uh, the, the satellite that makes this imagery actually has 22 different channels that it looks at. 22 bands. secret decoder rings. 22 secret decoder rings. Okay. Uh, you know, I liken this to an uh, you know, activity I had in the car when I was growing up. We'd go on long car rides, and we'd do all the work in these activity books to, you know, stay calm, cool, and collected for our parents who were trying to get us across, uh, across the state. But to get the answer, the real answer, you had to apply that red sheet to see mm. the answer or the secret path or whatever the message was in that activity book to get you onto the next, next page. And it's also like a, a photography filter, right? If you're, if you're taking a lot of pictures, you can apply different colors to see different parts of that image. I mean, that sounds a lot like what you're talking about. Oh, you know it. We, the information is in there all yeah. along. We just have to combine the channels in a way to reveal what's in there. And by the way, you're dating yourself. So you didn't yeah. have an iPad in the back of the car? No, sir. Right? Okay. <laughs> well, we have... Lastly, for dessert, okay. there's a great image of the same kind of recipe. We're looking at South Central Alaska mm -hmm. the first week of January. In Jan first week of January, the sun, even at noon, is really, really low, low on the horizon, right. barely up. And in this image, the fun thing is the shadow of Denali. We can see the shadow oh, of wow. Denali over a, a lower pink cloud deck. Yeah, that's and amazing. Denali at 20,000 feet casts a big shadow. Mm -hmm. So this is another, just for fun, kind of application here. That's oh yeah, th this is called multispectral satellite imagery, and it's the future. And <laughs> happily, the future is now. Oh, that is fascinating. And 22 different secrets that can be revealed from just one satellite tool that's mm -hmm. floating overhead. Mm -hmm. Eric, thanks so much for joining us again. We, we can't wait to have you back and telling us more secrets of satellite technology <laughs> that are passing over us every single day, uh, many times a day, mm -hmm. over Alaska and helping us all the way in uh, many different parts of our lives. So thanks so much for joining us again. Well, happy to be here. All right. And thank you for staying with us. We'll be back with a little more weather here in just a few minutes. And, of course, we'll have more Alaska Weather Facts anytime online. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at the uh, sea ice analysis today. A lot of uh, growth here along the west coast over the last couple of days and 24 hours. Norton Sound really filling in. Of course, Kotzebue Sound's been uh, covered in sea ice uh, for a couple of days. Norton Sound uh, almost there, too, really filling in on down the Yukon Delta coast there into uh, not quite Togiak the west of Togiak, and still uh, open area here, uh, open area, quite an open area, the Chukchi Sea, but that's uh, shrinking by the day. And moving on to the coastal water forecasts, uh, we got southwest winds at 15 tomorrow for the south coast of the Panhandle, and then small craft advisories with increasing winds to gale force out of the southeast on the north coast, seas 11 feet, south 25. There for Lynn Canal and Stevens Passage, southeast 20, northwest 15 for Clarence Strait. Outlook for uh, Wednesday, Clarence Strait, small craft advisories, north, southeast 25 knots. And uh, gales here for Stevens Passage, 35 to 40 knots, sustained southerly winds, and 30 knots out of the south for Lynn Canal. On the south coast, an increase in what you have tomorrow on Wednesday with south winds 30 knots, 15 foot seas, and then minimum gales or gale force winds 35 to 40 knots for the central and north coast all out of the south seas running 18 to 21 feet Prince William Sound east 40 knots uh, full gales there tomorrow seas 9 feet and southeast 40 for the eastern north gulf coast uh, falling back to about 30 knots here for the western north gulf coast barren islands gales south 35 knots Full gales tomorrow from the east and northeast for southern Cook Inlet into Kamishak Bay, 40 to 45 knots, seas 13 to 16 feet, and north 30 knots for northern Cook Inlet. That'll swing around to the south and come down to 30 knots for the day Wednesday here for northern Cook Inlet. And then uh, we've got uh, for southern Cook Inlet, Kamishak Bay, southerly winds at 30 knots with 10-foot uh, seas. South winds sustain 40 knots for the Barren Islands and south 35 knots for the western North Gulf Coast and then just under gale force here in the Middleton Island zone there with uh, winds at about 30 knots and Prince William Sound, Swell Craft Advisory, south winds 25. Kodiak Island, gale warnings are flying or will be flying tomorrow for south winds at 35 knots and 35 knots to Castle Cape 
And then 40 knots out of the south, Castle Cape to Cape Sarachev, north side of the peninsula, we'll call it southeast, gale four southeast at 35 knots. Even stronger in Bristol Bay, southeast 40 knots, 12 foot seas. Coming down to 25 knots of Bristol Bay the next day on Wednesday, uh, still from, uh, from the south, 9 foot seas, and then southwest winds 30 to 35 knots here for the Alaska Peninsula with uh, Pacific side seas 25 feet, south 30 knots uh, for the uh, area southwest of Sitkin Axe, Yellowcoff Strait, south 30 knots, east side of Kodiak, southwest 40 knots, 22 foot seas. For the uh, eastern Aleutians, far western zones, north 25, and then gale force winds here uh, from, say, Kiska Island along and south of the uh, turning westerly at 40 knots south of the Adak Atka area, small path advisors on the north side, and uh, 20 to 30 knot winds for the Fox Islands. 20 to 30 knot variable winds for the Fox Islands. And then uh, for Wednesday, call it southwest, 35 knots for Unmak and Alaska Islands on Wednesday. And south to southwest, 35 here from the central Aleutians all the way out to about Kiska, then it falls down to 30 knots. And uh, full gales here for Norton Sound, St. Lawrence Island, uh, into the northern Bering Sea, as well as uh, the area south of Nunavak Island. 40 to 45 knot winds from the east-northeast. Storm warnings there for the Yukon Delta coast. Northeast 50 knots, northeast 30 for the Pribilofs with 12 foot seas. And for Wednesday, northeast 25 for Norton Sound, gales for St. Lawrence Island. Full gales from the northern Bering Sea and up along the Arctic coast. South winds 10 to 15, northeast 10 on the west side. Small craft advisories, Wales to Cape Thompson. Outlook for Wednesday, 40 knot winds, Wales to Cape Thompson. Otherwise, uh, 20, 25 knot winds from the east and northeast for the remainder of the Beaufort Sea coast and western Arctic coast. For tonight, big wind and uh, precipitation coming in with uh, winter storm warnings out. Uh, as this storm moves northward over the next uh, 24 hours here over the western interior, high wind warning, St. Lawrence Island, winter storm warning, Susitna Valley for possible heavy snow, and uh, mixture of precipitation will be moving northward both tomorrow and Wednesday. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.